A team at Nanyang Technological University has developed the world's first pollen-based sunscreen. It's a natural formula that blocks harmful UV rays and cools the skin by up to 5 degrees Celsius. It says the eco-friendly sunscreen is also safe for marine life, offering a healthier choice for both people and the planet. Made from camellia flower pollen, the non-allergenic sunscreen forms a transparent, gel-like layer that creates a cooling effect, reducing heat buildup for up to 20 minutes under the sun. Studies show that some conventional sunscreens can contribute to coral bleaching within six days. In contrast, the team says its pollen-based formula does not harm corals. Now, NTU Singapore says it's in talks with commercial companies on a pilot facility to produce the hydrogel. And here to share more is Professor Cho Nam Jun, who is Director of the Centre for Cross Economy and also President's Chair in Material Science and Engineering at the Nanyang Technological University. Now, Prof, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you now, very much for having we'll me. we'll first yes. start off with how effective the sunscreen is, right? We're quite used to the SPF measure in terms of how effective it can protect against UV rays. So how many SPF is this sunscreen? Yeah, so lab tests show our pollen-based formulation block UV lay comparable to at the level of a commercial one, which is SPF 30. So it's a 30 SPF sunscreen, and it's quite comparable to a lot of brands that we might see uh, out there. Can you tell us a bit more about the sunscreen and how you might say it's a, a little bit different when it comes to the consistency or when it comes to uh, the way it works on the skin, for example? So for example, like commercial one is basically they degrading the property of the sunscreen because they have containing the chemical absorption. So in our case, we physically block UV lay and inherently the pollen-based material very stable so we don't have any degradation property. So it prolongs very stable. Right. And how does the flower pollen then translate into protection against UV rays? So basically in this particular case, you can actually see the natural property you see the, a lot of plant out there, and then you see the pollen, whether it changes sun ray, and then they protect inner uh, cellular structure. So we basically take the bio-inspired. This property basically demonstrate we convert this pollen to the microgel so that we apply to the skin, so they block UVA and UVB, it's a broader spectrum basically UV filter case. Right, and, and before we get to trying out actually some of these uh, gels and creams that you've brought for us today, I want to ask also because there's been recent concern about some reports coming out of Australia that many sunscreens actually fail to meet the protection stated on the SPF level on the packaging, for example. So how can users then be reassured that this sunscreen actually does protect to a level of SPF 30? So that's why engineering processing control is very important. In our laboratory, we consistently check the SPA level for the prolonged time. In this particular case, as I mentioned, the pollen is known as a diamond of the organic world. It's very stable. Compared with uh, those chemical observed the oxobenzone, and then they degrading. That's why they change the SPF over time. So that's the advantage of having a natural uh, start to, to the chemical. That's correct. So if you tell us a bit more about why your team chose to use camellia flowers, and as you've told us uh, just off air earlier, it's also sunflower, apparently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How many types of flowers can we use their pollen in this case for making sunscreen? So in our laboratory, we test about 20 plus various of a pollen sample and then from there we choose the camellia and sunflower which is most abundant. However, in this particular case there is a lot of different kinds of species of pollen which is 270,000 different pollen species. Among that, most of the ubiquitous we can actually convert in a similar fashion. Right. And also, you know, you've brought for us uh, some samples here of uh, the product. If we take a closer look at it here, if we get our cameras onto some of the samples that are brought here by Professor today. We actually have uh, two different samples. You have one that's a little bit clearer right here. That's with the camellia flower, uh -huh, if that's I'm correct. correct. And then on the other side, you have the creamier formulation that belongs to the sunflower pollen uh, formulation. So we're going to try a little bit here. Uh, something that uh, Prof has brought in for us. This one would be the camellia uh, formulation. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to take a little bit and just put it on my hand here because there's said to be like a cooling effect 
once you put this on for about 20 minutes. And I can see already it's a bit of a gel-like consistency. It's quite transparent. It's very lightweight, mm -hmm. unlike the creams we usually use to when it comes to sunscreen. <clears throat> you can see the consistency here. And it is a bit cooling, but I would say, Prof, it's not uh, like a menthol type of cool that you might find perhaps in some products. Uh, how would you describe this cooling effect? Where does it come from? And is it suitable for sensitive skin? So basically, menthol is a, a chemical sensation cooling kind of effect. It's a prolonged few seconds. So in this particular case, we block basically UVA, UVB, and then we basically scatter the visual light so it does not build up the temperature in the body. So if you actually put it there for a long time, then you can actually feel that the temperature does not go up. Conventional commercial sunscreen go back to the room temperature within three to seven minutes. In our case, we lower down temperature for 20 minutes. Right, that's interesting because uh, exactly. as I'm feeling it now, you can feel that the effect is quite lingering. In fact, mm -hmm. it's getting more cooling yeah, is, as I leave is. it. So mm -hmm. I wonder what the mechanism is. Do you think it helps to reduce overheating uh, in that case? Is it is there a function uh, to this cooling effect or is it more a sensation on the skin? So basically in the exposure to the sunlight, you're building up the temperature in here. But in this case, you scatter the, those visible and the UV light. So it does not build up. Mm -hmm the temperature in this particular phase. So it's basically reflecting, blocking effect. Another highlight of, uh, I suppose, this formulation is that it does not harm coral reefs. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of people are concerned about. Coral bleaching is a huge issue mm -hmm. here. So uh, in this case, how does it prevent uh, marine life or other environmental harm in this case? So in this particular case, we basically take the idea from nature. Mm -hmm. The pollen actually have the basically production crop and then go back to the basically sea or go back to the nature. In particular, the reason the coral leaf is bleached out because they're using the chemical like oxybenzene or mineral like you know, titanium and zinc. And in this particular case, we're using purely for natural pollen. So that's why it's very effective and then natural and then it's uh, basically eatable. Right, so we look forward to any future developments, especially as you go uh, looking for commercial partners as well for this project. And Professor, great to have you in studio with us, and thank you for showing us uh, the effects of some of these products as well. Uh, that was Prof Cho Nam Jun from NTU Singapore. Thank you very much for having me here tonight, Angela. Thank you.